Thanks so welcome to Retech and today we're going to discuss the invention of the microchip and it's not quite as it kind of gets reported. It's not really Texas Instruments that invented the microchip and like all things within the computer era it's kind of an amalgamation of a lot of separate people in separate countries and a lot of slightly different designs all based around kind of the same idea. So Texas Instruments did have a big part to play in the microchip and a lot of it was down to let's say taking people to court and suing for a patent that really they didn't own and they didn't really have or they had no rights to which we'll, we'll cover slightly down this video. So let's have a quick look at how the microchip was invented and who invented the microchip. Okay so the integrated circuit was first invented during 1958 to 59. The idea of integrating electronics into a single device or substrate was born when German physicist Werner Jacobi had developed a patent. Um, he developed the idea and he patented the idea. And that was as far back as 1949. And that was originally called the Integrated Transistor Amplifier. And that was back in 1949. And it wasn't only the German scientists that actually came up with the idea of an integrated circuit or an IC. And that's what became later on in life is our um, computer chip, our processor, our microchip, etc. But it was way back in 1949 that the original patent and the original idea for an integrated circuit came about. Now, he wasn't the only person to, do, to have this idea. It was a British engineer that actually came up with the monolithic integrated circuit and that was around about the same time so it seems like there was a few people working on the same idea and he patented his own idea in 1953 and at this time the engineer was called Jeffrey Dummer and he wasn't the only one because in 1953 there was um, a Japanese engineer called Yasser and a Sydney Darlington also patented a idea of an integrated circuit. So as you can see around this time there was a lot of different people in different countries doing exactly the same and also patenting their own ideas and this was before the guys at Texas Instruments got involved as well. So it's not that Texas Instruments didn't have a big thing to do with the integrated circuit. It's more that they really didn't come up with the invention initially. Um, but if it wasn't for Texas Instruments, as we'll find out, maybe we wouldn't have had the integrated circuit um, as a concept, you know, to take it onto a manufacturing point of view. But again, that even changes it. This microcomputing era and the inventions around it kind of bounced around the world and it was never really one company that actually invented anything it was always a a kind of progression on somebody else's initial idea now it was a few years later in 1958 that jack kilby was trying to implement the ideas of the three people we mentioned earlier um and it wasn't a single company again. Um, Jack Kilby came up with the idea of kind of having a, a layer in between the components, which is probably the easiest way to explain it, that um, allowed isolation between them. And, but he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone in this. There were also two other companies that were working on the same idea. Now, Jack Kilby's... Um, kind of version wasn't monolithic it was kind of a a combination of two separate ideas but it was um, a kind of a step in the right direction and it was 
in order to aid the manufacturing of these um, ICs, these integrated circuits. But it was in 1959 that Kurt Leovec found a way of isolating the components and um, that was a huge advantage because it meant that these ICs as we know them could be produced um, and basically it would isolate the separate components or transistors on the same substrate or the same platform and that was in 1959. But the first kind of monolithic semiconductor um, was Robert Noyce of Fairchild Semiconductor and he found a way of isolating each individual component on a monolithic system and that's roughly kind of the basis of the integrated circuit as we kind of know today. Now the Kilby version was never really a success and it never really garnered any sort of commercial interest where the monolithic version um, was the one that actually became the ICs as we know it today. So not to say that Jack Kilby didn't have a big hand in creating the integrated circuit but it wasn't his patent and his design that actually won out and the one that was being able to be produced in the way we kind of know our integrated circuits today and that was the difference but you know as we all know these things aren't as straightforward as that and um, Texas Instruments kind of thought different as well they thought that people were infringing their copyright on an integrated circuit and they started doing a massive suing war against just about everybody who was producing their own or had their own ideas and so on but that seems to be the way some of these big corporations were going it was I've got an idea and that idea is mine and basically any other variation of this idea whether my idea worked or not we're going to take you to court to earn some money and that was the same as the Wright brothers the Wright brothers did exactly the same and they you know by doing this they always dropped the ball and they always stopped developing their own systems or their in the Wright brothers case their own planes and they get overtaken by every other company out there now the lawsuit with um, Texas Instruments wasn't really settled until 1966 and just to read off a kind of quote there was no consensus who invented the IC um, American press of the 1960s named four people Kilby, Leovec, Noyce and Hermy I hope I've pronounced that right. In 1970, the list was then shortened to Kilby, Noyce, and that was it. Now, there's nobody 100% certain who invented the IC, but the original idea came from a German and a Brit, and that was a few years before the, the big corporates took it over and started suing each other left, right and centre. Now, how did the um, integrated circuit come about? Because we had valves, you know, you had um, ENIAC, EDZAC, um, the valves were being used in um, primitive kind of computers in flying fortresses and, you know, that kind of uh, scenario. But when you're looking at um, machines that use upwards of 17,000 valves, they hit a hit a point where they couldn't progress with computer technology and because of that they needed something new and it wasn't until the invention of the integrated circuit that they could move on with electronics and computational power and that was a big game changer which is kind of why it's pretty hard for um, a lot of people to kind of discern who actually invented the IC. But, you know, like all things, things develop, things progress. And that progression was 1947 when the transistor was invented. But like a lot of things, um, it wasn't a massive success because the transistor, although it reduced the size of things, it didn't reduce the power consumption nor the reliability 
and again, which is one of the reasons they went down the IC route only a few years later. And it was only a few years later because in 1949, Werner Jacobi patented his idea for an integrated circuit. And that really is kind of genesis. That's the point where things started to change. Jeffrey Dummer was the, the guy that actually put it out there in the consensus because he did a speech in Washington um, not long after he painted his idea. And I'm going to read an extract from that speech. With the advent of the transistor and working semiconductors generally, it seems now to be possible to envisage electronic equipment in a solid block with no connecting wires. The block may consist of layers of insulating, conducting, rectifying and amplifying materials. Now that's basically the IC as we know it today. And it contains all the electric functions being connected by cutting out areas of various layers. And he's become famous for the profit of the integrated circuits, but not necessarily as the inventor. Early transistors were made of germanium and it wasn't till a little bit further on when an employee from Texas Instruments produced the first silicon based integrated circuit and that person was Gordon Kidd Teal and that kind of moved the game on because it now it was a commercially available integrated circuit because silicon has the advantage of being more durable and it can operate at higher temperatures and it makes manufacturing a lot easier than germanium. Now while all of this was going on Texas Instruments kind of took umbrage at all of these other companies producing silicon chips or ICs at the time and they went on a huge huge spree of suing just about everybody who had moved the game on and they they saw Jack Kilby's pattern or design as theirs as their own. Now it went through about nine different court cases with nine different companies and at the end of all this the um, the the outcome was that Texas Instruments didn't actually own the patent to monolithic ICs. Now, if you remember, Jack Kilby's version was a hybrid. And, you know, that kind of did a lot of damage to Texas Instruments because they no longer had carte blanche to do whatever they wanted and sue whoever they wanted to sue. Now, that's mainly because the silicon IC or the IC in general, whether it's germanium or silicon, um, wasn't invented by Texas Instruments. And although kind of populist history has put it down as Texas Instruments being the inventor of the integrated circuit, that's not really how it happened. And there were a lot of other companies involved in this. Um, you had Bell Labs, which were a big player, IBM believe it or not, RCA, General Electrics, they all had a massive part to play, especially in the isolation of components on a integrated circuit, because prior to that, there was no real isolation on board with these integrated circuits. So it made manufacturing and implementation incredibly difficult. And, you know, with the advent of the the, the gold rush days of trying to get integrated circuits out into the world, the um, planar and monolithic process were the ones that won out. And again, this had very little to do with Texas Instruments. Now, that's not saying Texas Instruments didn't play a big part. They, they, they played a massive part in the you know, the world of integration, world of ICs, the world of silicon chips. But to kind of state that um, Texas Instruments invented the integrated circuit is not particularly true. And there's always other processes on the way to get an invention working 100%. It's kind of standing 
on the shoulders of giants because without the initial idea, the initial investigation into something and the initial prototyping stage and the initial failures of a certain design, then nothing ever really happens. And Texas Instruments to a massive degree was standing on the shoulders of giants. The people who came up with the invention, the people who came up with the ideas and the people who came up with the original patents. To kind of summarise, Texas Instruments had a huge part to play. They had a very important part to play. But the original inventors of an IC was a German and a Brit, which was followed by a number of high profile companies putting money and resources and also having to battle Texas Instruments which they eventually overcome and won and then Texas Instruments to their credit picked up the version of um, a monolithic IC and silicon based IC and ran with it and basically put it into production which was brilliant because if they didn't we wouldn't be where we are now. Okay so I hope you enjoyed that little snippet into the world of integrated circuits and who invented what um, and I hope it put right a few things that you know maybe weren't quite 100% out you know when reported out there in newspaper articles, magazines and so on and um, you know every now and again the kind of facts need to be kind of pointed out and um, hopefully this has gone some way to doing that so thanks for watching i hope you enjoy this and please subscribe and we'll do a little bit more on the history of computing technologies and the people around them so thanks for watching and i'll see you soon goodbye